welcome to my video. My name is Julia and today I want to talk about a show I watched <laughs> recently and I loved it. And that show is We Are Who We Are. This is a coming of age drama series which was a limited series and was directed and co-created by Luca Guadagnino who most famously created Call Me By Your Name. And this show will give you very similar vibes. The story focuses on two American 14 year old kids who live in a fictional US army base in the year 2016 in Northern Italy. It's all about the themes of friendship, love, family, identity, politics, and the sixth point I can't think of. So first episode, we get to know this boy called Fraser Wilson. He's 14 years old and is moving from New York to the military base in Northern Italy. He's moving with his mother, Sarah Wilson, played by Chloe Sevigny. Who is a colonel in the US Army and her wife, Maggie, a major in the US Army. This show made me realize I know nothing about the army and military positions. To me, they are all the same. Um, but I'm sure there's ranks. I'm very sure there's ranks. On the other side, we have Caitlin or Harper, a 14 year old girl who's been living on the base for a while and who's struggling with her gender identity. She lives on the base with her father, Richard, who's a Lieutenant Colonel. Oh God. I just realized it's pronounced Colonel. She lives with her father, Richard, a uh, lieutenant colonel, and mother, Jenny, and her brother, Danny. And so we follow the lives of Fraser and Harper on this military base and how they cope with everyday life. In the first episode, it's all about Fraser arriving at this military base and moving in with his mothers. And oh boy, at the beginning, I hated them all. <laughs> I, I watched the first 20 minutes and I was like, wow. I truly hate these people. They're so rude and chaotic and they're not very nice and rude and not very nice. It's kind of the same thing. And Fraser was this over the top, obnoxious kid. He kind of seemed spoilt. You just thought, who is this boy? I don't actually want to know. He seems horrible. But then in the second episode, when we follow Caitlin's storyline, we get to see what she's all about. And you're like, I like this Caitlin and uh, her family and her friends seem kind of interesting. And then when she gets to know Fraser, you feel like, okay, I think there's something there. I like this friendship. I like the group dynamic. And throughout the show, Fraser and Caitlin influence each other and you start to like them. And in the end, I loved Fraser. He was quirky, but Kind of great. <laughs> so in this US military base, we also have a lot of side characters. Family, friends, soldiers who live there, love there and work there. Oh, I hate myself for saying that. For example, we have Brittany, who's Caitlin's best friend. And she's the kind of girl where you feel like she's kind of insecure, doesn't know what she wants. And that's why she presents herself in a certain way and wants a boy's attention. But she's just a, a great friend. I really liked her. Then we have Sam, who's Caitlin's possessive boyfriend, who you get to know as well, and you're like, what's 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 this deal? What's happening? And we have Jonathan, who's a soldier who works quite close with Sarah, who's afraid. I'm just thinking about the fact that I pronounced Colonel Colonel. Anyway, Jonathan, he's a soldier who works close with Sarah, who's Fraser's mum. And Fraser kind of becomes infatuated with him. He has a big crush on this guy. And we, you get why, he's a very charming, handsome man. I just really enjoyed the friendship between Fraser and Harper. I think that's what kind of makes the show. Because Fraser's this kind of lost boy who is trying to express himself and find himself. And like, he wears the most insane outfits. He does all these crazy impulsive things. The more you watch the show, you the more you understand why. And you're like, I get it. Fraser, you're a complex boy. And then you have Caitlin who's struggling with her gender identity and you Fraser kind of show her YouTube videos and kind of open her eyes to how this is very normal and something Caitlin can talk about with him. He's just kind of there for her as a friend and you see Caitlin or Harper grow and become more confident and do her own thing and it's so nice to see 
it's just a beautiful friendship. Um, I loved watching them teach each other and learn from each other and just support each other. It was nice. I also enjoyed that the characters were very flawed, especially the kind of dominant parent of each child. So we have Sarah for Frasier and Richard, Caitlin's dad. And you kind of didn't like them because they were so dominant and Richard's dad was a Trump supporter and it just felt a bit, you're like, oh, nah. And throughout the show, you get to know them and come to realize why they are the way they are, what they do and what moves them and how they love their kids. So it's really just a fascinating watch. And I loved how flawed they were. And because the dominant parent was so flawed, you as a viewer gravitated towards um, the other parents. So Maggie with Fraser and Jenny, Caitlin's mum. And it was nice to see them interacting and them develop their own storyline. And it was kind of a contrast to the crass and dominant parenting from the other partner. And I love that we had their own storyline, kind of more quiet and slow story intertwined with all the drama. There is a big focus on the teenage group, so friend group of Caitlin's and Fraser's. And I really like them all. At the beginning, you're like, I would be intimidated by these teens. They're like this big group who likes to party and they're loud. And I think as a teenager, I would have been like, they're so cool, but I'm so scared. At the beginning, I'm not sure if it was because I'm an adult or why, but I just couldn't identify with the teenagers. They were just too wild, too kind of bold and crazy and doing weird shit. And I was like, no. I, I wasn't like that as a teen, so I can't really relate. But as the show goes on, you just learn to love them so much and feel for them and you understand what they're going through. And it just kind of showed me that they are portraying real teenagers because teenagers can be a bit shitty as can adults, as can we all. There's one episode where the group breaks into a, a house and has like a huge party and that's like the whole episode. I did not like that episode. First of all, I was like, whose house is this? This is rude, they live here. And they made pasta, as in spaghetti, and they ate it with their hands. That was insane. It was just a bit too excessive. But that might just mean that I'm old and boring. Or young and boring, I don't know. I'm just boring, I guess. Next to the characters, the thing I liked the most was the atmosphere. It just reminded me very much of Call Me By Your Name, the atmosphere, the music, the shots. It's a classical thing, people just looking at stuff and feeling things, I, I loved it. And it's obviously Luca Guaranino style, so I'm here for it. I made me feel welcome as soon as I started watching because I was like, this seems so familiar, such a familiar world. And also being set in Northern Italy kind of had the same feeling. I also really liked the atmosphere of the military base because it was such a kind of enclosed small community. Everyone knew everyone. It was kind of kind of cozy even. I know, questionable. But it was kind of nice to watch, to be able to see what life would be like in a military base. Not that I'd ever want to be there, but it was interesting. It was an interesting watch and I'd never seen anything like it before. And you also got to see the Italian countryside and the town they live in, so that was nice as well. You got a bit of a break. You got to see it all. The show also has a great dance scene routine in it, which I thought was incredible. So I'm gonna put the link down below if I can find it and you can feel the good vibes of that dance scene. My favorite episode was the very last episode because to me, it fully encapsulated what it's like being a teenager. So in this episode, Fraser and Harper go to a concert in a bigger city in Bologna. Bologna, wow. And so they take the train, they get to the concert, they stay up all night and certain things happen. And the whole atmosphere was so familiar to me. It just kind of reminded me of my teenage days where me and my friends used to get a train into a bigger city to see a concert and then stay up all night and then have to go to school the next day. And just, it was that kind of wild, weird feeling where only tonight matters. Whatever happens afterwards, who cares? I just love that episode. I thought it was beautiful. And watch the show for the last episode alone. I don't know why, but that one made me, ah, feel so many things. Nostalgia, I guess. I really enjoyed the show. I have to admit, like the first episode is hard to get into, but once you're past it, it's easy breezy. It's a great watch. It's very creative, very artistic, very interesting. Um, a story I don't think I'd ever seen before in that capacity. It was a beautiful coming of age story with a twist. <laughs> yeah, and if you've seen it, I'd love to hear your opinions and you know similar shows or films that you could recommend me to watch or books. 
I make videos about films, books, series, things I like. So if you want to subscribe, you're very, very welcome to. I'd be honored, flattered, touched. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day. Ooh, also watch this show for the graphics alone. The title sequence for every episode is beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, bye.